Greetings everyone! Welcome back to another edition of The Velvet Lounge Life. Today I have another special edition and this one we shall be looking at my own personal junk journal lookbook and it's something that I really, really enjoyed putting together, but I think you guys know from the previous videos, this is a trek that I've been on and just having so much fun with it. I have a how-to video coming out in regards to how I create these covers, which is, of course, the, the front, the spine, and the back. And I'll even discuss very, very briefly, it's probably one sentence, how I bind in the different signatures. And as you remember, signatures are the different sections inside of the book. But the main concentration in that video series, it, it's not even a series, it's going to be a series, one single video, will be simply how I create the covers because it is so nice, the feedback that I've been getting from you guys that are here from Facebook. Welcome, 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 and thank you, thank you, thank you. And everyone that is here organically from YouTube, blessings, and also thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome. So I had a lot of questions um, because I am part of junk journal groups. Now, I mean, it became a thing for me. I think I joined these groups like two weeks ago and I posted a link to my video that I did in regards to my butt button junk journal lookbook. And it's also a way to sort of take small items that you have and neatly organize them in one place, but also have something interesting that they're stored in. So because of that cross-sectioning, um, people were like, well, how did you do this? How did you make that? Um, wow, look at your covers. Wow, look at your cover. Wow, look at your cover. So I definitely wanted to do a quick video. Well, you know me, it's probably going to be at least 20 minutes, but a 20 minute or so video on that topic. So that is coming in the future. So let's talk about another thing, which is not only this book, but you can be the owner and the new caretaker, if you will, of one of two of these types of books that I am giving away. The only thing that you have to do is be a subscriber to this channel. And to do that, you just hit the subscribe button. That is it. It's totally free. It's never cost anything and leave a comment below this video. So if you look at the video, you'll see the title of the video, you'll see the subscribe button, hit that. And then if you look just down maybe another quarter of an inch, less than that, you'll see a where it says comments and a area that you can hit where you just hit that in the comments for this video, open up. And you could read what other people had to say. You could reply back to them, comment on what they said. You could thumbs up or thumbs down their comments and replies. But most importantly, you can also leave your own comment. And that is something that you need to do if you want to be the winner of one of the two books that I am giving away. So that's pretty much it. I was asking people to add hashtag the Velvet Lounge Life to their comments. I have no idea why it's so hard, but some people tried to enter, but they did not leave the hashtag. At this point, I guess, if you, you know what, if you leave the hashtag, you will get two entries. How about that? If you don't leave the hashtag, you will have a single entry. So simply subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. If you also add hashtag the Velvet Lounge Life to your comment, you will be entered twice. And you can look at any of our videos, the oldest video to the newest video and leave comments and also be a subscriber. And I am going to count those 
comments as well from now until August 10th. So you have from now to August 10th to enter and you can have multiple entries. So hopefully you, especially the people that participate the most, will end up being the winner of one of these books. That would be so, so much fun and yay. But let's talk about this book. So this book, like I said, is my own personal book. And in this book, what I did is really put memories that type of thing, things that I felt, you know, feel or feel anyway, fit my personality. There are lots of pockets and belly bands and corners and all sorts of fancy things in here as well. Um, so without further ado, let's get going. So as you can see on the cover, I have my Scrabble letters and you can also see that versus just putting them in a straight line, I sort of kitty cornered every other letter. You could do whatever you want with this, obviously, but the thing that's most important is how to attach these to the cover so that they never come off. And here I have this beautiful like medallion toggle thing. And what I did is I used some trade beads as well as other beads that were given to me as a gift by one of my beautiful subscribers and it's on this hemp thong and I actually made it so that I can tie this book and keep it closed. Um, you don't always have to have a tie or a fastener on your um, on these types of books but I can say it is helpful if you have things that might slide out but I honestly really haven't had that issue. I just sort of like the look of it. And so I'm kind of getting into a habit of adding these like extra tying mechanisms, but it's definitely optional. And on this, you can see it says history of the world, great sensations. And what I had to do, this is an old leather book. So I had to do a lot of shoring up of this book after I ripped out its contents. And that's something that will be covered in that future video as to how I make these covers. And then I do have a solution that goes on the leather so that it toughens back up and becomes sturdy and even waterproof, believe it or not. And then the other thing that I did is I took things that I cut out that I liked and, you know, made them part of this cover. This is just a stick, a piece of wood from a butterfly bush that grows in our yard. I have no idea why I like this stick so much, but I decided to make it part of this ensemble or ensemble. And here, these this is actually cut out from a business newspaper that I received. Um, and this is from something that I got in the mail from a group that I'm a member of, the ACLU. And here is his pen, paper, and, and what? And I just like the pen, paper, and. And so I took that and just ripped it, literally ripped it with my hand to get this rough edge. And then I used a marker that bleeds so that the color would bleed into the outer perimeter. And then I simply applied it to this. And then when you apply things to this, you do have to seal it in. So that's once again, something else I will discuss in that other video, how to seal this in. You can't just use an Elmer's glue or a tacky glue to put this down. It won't last forever if you do that. And something else to do is remember, everything doesn't have to be straight on. It could be kitty cornered, butterflied, upside down, backwards, whatever. Even the spoon goes all the way across and it tucks under this side. So just things to be aware of. And don't be shocked, the baby is not glued down. Um, but I am considering gluing the baby somewhere over here. So tell me in the comments what you think about that. Should this baby doll, who is from the 1930s, um, be part of this? I'm sorry, this is from the 1940s, World War I. Um, should this little baby doll be part of this book somehow? Um, I feel like it can be. I like weird things on my covers. I like my covers to have a 3D effect. I know that sometimes people make covers and they are 
you know, full of fluffy things that are going to catch a lot of dust over time. I'm not really a dust collector type of person. So these covers are also going to be easy to clean with a duster because they're not, you know, made of just material and felt and that type of thing. So to open this, I actually just used a slip knot. So you just slip this out and open it up. Voila, toggling. And you can open the book. And this is what you see initially. So initially what you're looking at is, and I also purposely left this, I was going to cover this, but I kind of like this roughness right here. It just, I don't know, added age to the book. And the other thing you'll notice is I don't like falsely age my items. So because I don't like having anything that has its own natural age, I think is really helpful. And it's, it's just the natural progression of things anyway. But here, what I, and I'll actually move this over here. What I have, you can see where the spoon continued on this side. I just thought that was such a cool thing. Um, but what I did is I put a belly band here and I have this card, obviously, with a piece of ribbon through it. And my, sis, my daughter made some stuff like of these cutouts for me she actually just designed her own series of cutouts and so i have some of those in here and i actually created this notebook um from a book so it was a book and i just loved the art deco design of the chapter pages so i actually took out most of the chapter pages and created a notebook out of them then i took the notebook and i attached it to this inner front cover so that if you have little notes you want to make or whatever, you have a place here where you can make notes. But here I, of course, added an embellishment and this actually came from an antiques newspaper. And the newspaper had always has lots of colorful pictures and little snippets. And this was one that I actually cut out in my own way, did a little colorizing around the edge and then you know, this is the beautiful bird with a flower in its mouth. So I thought that was cool. So this, if you took, if this was alone, the way it was just as a notebook, that would be, I think, pretty cool. But obviously attaching it to this book gives you another place to make notes. Underneath, you will see that there's mapping here. And then this folder or envelope or whatever you want to call it, a place to hold things is actually made out of an old um, envelope, which was like a priority mail envelope way back in the day. This one was, I want to say from France, actually it says right here, by Air Mail Par Avion, which is France. And then here there's writing in French and it was going to Israel. And by way of someone who lived in Connecticut. So I don't even know like how that worked, but whatever. And here I actually took this envelope and reconstructed it. It has basically this one giant pocket from left to right, but obviously you could just slip something in right here if you wanted to. And then what I did just as like a hidden thing is added a little hidden pocket area here, which is just on the left side of this and on the right side as well. And then I took some bits and bobs that I had. There's like this, these are the original stamps that were on here. And of course you can see the cancel stamp from the um, post office. This is a Disney sticker. This is something I took out of a magazine that I had, an old, old magazine. And this was from a collection of motorcycle cards. And what I did is simply embellish by using them on that page. So over here, what we have is one of my signatures. And this book actually has how many signatures? Actually, I didn't show you this, did I? So let me just show you this very quickly. So on this side, we have the classifieds. Okay, that's simply a piece that I cut out from a newspaper. I love the look of the font and the little fancy bits here. And 
you can also see this is from an old set of sewing needles and really that's what makes this up and there's one two three four five six signatures one two three four five six signatures in this book and you can see I sewed them in and then on the back what we have is this so I consider the backs of the, my books to be almost like bulletin boards. So I just kind of go a little bit wild on them, but I did create these corners. You could see here, and there's four of them. The other two are down there. And this is from, once again, <laughs> a set of sewing needles. I think there's a theme here. And these are antique sewing needles, so they're not just, ooh, I bought these sewing needles. These are pieces of ephemera that became part of this book. And this is from an ad, the Agora Bar Ballroom, which was a popular place back in the day. And then this is from a set of old cigarette cards and, you know, other things that were cut out. This is actually from a Trader Joe's paper bag. I love <laughs> cutting out the things on the Trader Joe bags. And this is a cancellation um, from, I believe, some cigarettes or something. So, you know, or cigars, I believe it was. So, yeah, let your mind go a little bit wild doing this. So, over here, what I have, and I'll push that up a little more. In this particular signature, there's this pocket and belly band combination, which I created. So, it's, you know, created from a bunch of things that I cut out here. Our daughter was a member of the United States Figure Skating Association, so we have quite a bit of, like, ephemera from that um, time in her life. And then here is another belly band to simply hold some memories. This is a 1940s, 1930s um, newspaper ad that I actually cut out from a paper, newspaper that was dated that era. I told you guys I do have... A collection of ephemera so I am able to go to those items which for years I was like what was I going to do with these things and occasionally a craft or something came up I could use them for but now I have an even better purpose and so here I just simply took this fancy paper and turned it you know on its access I guess is the word and I actually gave it a little fancy cut here with my fancy cut scissors and in here I have some funny ads you know do women have to be na naked to get into the Met or which is a Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and it has some factoids about less than 4% of the artist in the modern art section are women but 76% of the nudes or the naked ladies or any nude person that you see are female which seems very upside down but there you have it and then here this is these are the envelopes I talked about in another video which I only have maybe 12 of left um, but I love these envelopes I love this fancy edge and they're just very sense and sensibility you know Mr. Darcy receiving a fancy letter I could see that happening in this envelope but here it's a pocket as well so you could store things in it Right here is a pocket that I created out of 1940s, and it's actually from someone who was a photographer for the war, um, and he would receive all of these negatives and photographs back, and they always came in like these wax, waxy type of envelopes. I say waxy type because it's not really waxy, or at least it isn't anymore. And they're still tough enough to hold things. You know, they're they're super old, so you do have to be cool with it. And they were meant to be temporary. And, and on here, you could see where he wrote, I think he wrote duplicate, oh, he was like abbreviating duplicate print. But um, yeah, so that's, and actually it says uh, Kodachrome and it has other words that attest to it being something of photographic history and ephemera actual ephemera, not something that I handmade. And this actually is a cutout from a book. And in the book, it had certain sections that had these very fancy little tidbits like this. And what I did is simply cut it out, added some lace to the left and right side. 
And then there's a picture here from when we stayed at the Embassy Hotel in New York that my daughter had drawn for us when she was a wee willy wonka, a little tiny one. Oh, and this paper is more, I have quite a bit of stock ticker paper that dates from the 1960s back, I want to say to the 1930s. So you will see this as something in several of my books until I don't have any more left. And another great idea for a pocket um, versus, and because my thing is I have no issue with people creating pockets using brown ink or coffees or teas or whatever you use, leaves, it doesn't matter out in the world to age things, make them look old. But I do believe that if you look around your own home first, talk to relatives, etc., you will be able to find authentic uh, ephemeral items that you can use in your book. And to me, it just makes it more interesting. And a mixture of the both, the crafty stuff that people make, as well as the authentic stuff, which is vintage or antique, like this is vintage. I think they, or even modern, like this um, greeting card, obvious, well, I don't know if it's obvious, but it's modern. I think it makes this much more fun. So anyway, what I did is I used a record sleeve, a 45 record sleeve, to create this pocket. And honestly, all I did was glued it down on this page. But I wanted it to be like sort of funny. So that's why this guy's face is in here upside down. This is a card that was given to me by my husband some years ago. So record sleeves, and you can get plain, like there are plain record sleeves out there. So you might find like, let's say you find a bunch of records and someone's selling like a box of records for $5 and you notice that there's a crazy number of awesome record sleeves in there, that would be a good buy so that you can add that to your, your stash, especially your ephemeral stash for making books like this. Now, something I like to do is I actually like keeping these little smaller snippet pieces in here because when I make lists, this is very helpful. Or if I was going to write a sentiment or a quote that I thought was just amazing or something I came up with or whatever, these are great little areas for doing stuff like that. And here, this is um, the artist. He is mostly a singer, um, a rocker, a punker, a funker, is Lenny Kravitz, um, Let Love Rule Always. And what I did is I simply got this from, if you remember, the compact disc or the um, things that you, like the disc that you would put into your computer, which you can still, I think, do now. My la I haven't had a laptop that has had like a disc thing on it in years. But anyway, um, that's what this envelope is. And it actually has like this acetate, plastic, whatever, like cover. So it almost looks like a picture frame. So that's why I use that. And those make, once again, great items and books like this. These are actually rolling papers. If you don't know what those are, you can Google it. But in some country, I'm sorry, some countries, yeah, even some countries, I think, but definitely some areas in the United States, certain things are becoming legal. And I actually received a packet of like promotional items from his record company, which is why I have these, as well as other things that I received from the record company. And I was honestly shocked to find this in there, along with a, a lighter, a Zippo lighter. But I received lots of promotional items, so I wasn't, you know, that was surprising. And so this is, you can see where I tied this signature in. And here I have a pocket that I created that has a secret pocket. So behind this initial pocket, there is this larger pocket for storing things. And also I have a pocket here and also I have a belly band here. So if I wanted to really like tuck this underneath to make sure it never fell out, I mean, it shouldn't fall out anyway, being in the pocket, but I'm able to stuff it under there and stuff it in here and do the same. And maybe this one, I'll just put it on top like that. 
and nothing is going anywhere. So one of the things you should do is like just make sure that your items are secure. When you pick up the book, you really don't want things sliding and falling out all over the place. That would be so irritating. So I do t sort of test my books before I deem them complete just to make sure that, you know, everything flows well. And here what I have is I ripped this out from um, something that my child wrote when she was in, I want to say maybe the eighth grade. Um, she is a true fan of Shakespeare and she can quote so many things out of his work. And this is The Devil Will Cite Scripture for His Purpose. And it's from The Merchant of Venice, Acts, Act 1, Scene 3, William Shakespeare. So she had written this out as something to go in her yearbook um, when she was a senior. And so actually, I'm sorry, this is from when she was an, a senior. But I think she wrote this earlier. But later, she was going to put this quote in her underneath her picture as a senior. And the school would not allow her to do it, although they were the ones that taught them Shakespeare. So go figure that. And yeah, there's more to that story if you want to know about that. And it is very interesting. Then please leave a comment down below and I might spill the beans. And here I have a piece of lace. So I have no issue, as you could tell, with the use of lace and soft items for these books. It's just that me personally, I'm not looking to build like a pillow type book. So um, I sort of like, you know, it's sort of like putting salt on your food. You know, you want to be very specific about it. You don't want to overdo it. And so here what I have is another area where you could store things. But of course, anywhere that you see in this book, any place on the side of a record sleeve, on the side of the CD disc sleeve that had Lenny Kravitz, I had him, you know, in there as a picture frame. It doesn't matter where. You could write anywhere you want. You could paste things. You can draw things, whatever. It does not matter. Even if you want to color in these flowers, you know, act as if it's partially a coloring book, you could do that. But I like having like little hidden areas for writing as well, because maybe you open up your book and you don't want someone to see every single thing you wrote. So this is just like a hidden um, writing area. And this is a uh, once again, another cigarette card, which is a piece of ephemera, and you open it up, and you also have this pretty area, which you can write on it if you want to, color in the flowers, paste, tape things on here, whatever, and then underneath you have this area where you can also write, and then here you have this area, which is another area for storing things, so this is a little... Um, belly band pocket because it's not like a full fully going through pocket and I'm able to sort of put everything in there and it stays in place and yeah this is like one of the fun areas in this book for sure sure and then here we have a greeting card that I my husband gave me So how fun is that? So I glued it in just partially. I didn't glue the whole back, but when you open it, it does something. And here, once again, we have stock paper and then another card that my husband gave me. You open this one up and look, it does something. So have fun with those modern um, or pop-up type in musical, of course, greeting cards because I mean usually you get these and you keep them out for a while then you store them but now it's something I honestly have looked at this book so many times and I could tell you when I got this card I looked at it probably several times the month that I got it and then it was stored and I hadn't looked at it again in years and let's see when this is from actually this is from two <laughs> This is from this year, so <laughs> that, that statement I made, I have to take back. Let's see when this one is dated. So we'll shake our groove thing again. Okay, this is from, this one is from 2018. So that, I should have reversed my statement there. So once again, fancy paper. This um, is a pen that I was given when I worked on a particular 
political campaign, which I work on several of them by choice here and there. And so I, I actually, so a pin back pin can go in the, these books. It's a great way if you wanted to have one place to put all of your um, smaller brooches versus the big chunky ones, scatter pins can go in these, etc. Um, if you're an affiliation with a group or a club that has pins, another great place to store them is in a book like this. So the next thing that we have coming up is super cool. Maps, maps, and more maps. So I, I, okay, so there's almost a partial sacrilege to this. So I love putting maps in my books because I sort of just love the history of them. These are actually maps in this particular book are from 1903 and 1902. So there are people who would say, oh my God, don't ruin the map. You know, it, it's an antique. And of course, the way the world was then, it's totally different now if you looked at a map. And there's countries that didn't exist. There are new countries that have been added, new border lines. There's just so many changes. But I am one of those people where I, I really enjoy maps and I don't mind putting them in my books like this, even though they are antique ephemera or even if they were vintage. But here I have a map of Europe um, and I believe, I'm not sure which side this is without putting my face super close, but I feel like this is somewhere in France because I know this book I concentrated sort of on Europe. Yep, it is part of France. And this is the other part of Europe. So I sort of made them like do this dance together, <laughs> whether they wanted to or not. Because if you look at history, there was some volatility there. And here, I just love the look of this, where it's set, especially the words, the bookshelf. Come on. Perfect. I love books. My family were a bunch of readers for sure, or bookheads. And so what I did is I simply took some decorative paper and I took this piece out of actually in a newspaper that concentrates on antiques. And I just made this like decorative element for this page. So once again, as I always say, you could get crazy with this. And here I have this beautiful scalloping that I did using my decorative cutting scissors. And this is simply legal pad um, note paper. And all I did is ripped it out of the legal pad and I turned it sideways, did these fancy cuts and bam, there you go. You don't have to do that. You can just use a paper as it is and put them in these books. But to me, the more interesting the elements are in the book, the better. And this is a finger that I almost cut off with hedge trimmers. So yeah, it looks weird. And here, this is racial injustice, and you have this beautiful picture of the grandmas or the aunties, and they're, you know, studying up and getting ready to fight for our rights as human beings, especially women and people who are of any other color. And here I did, once again, another decorative cut up here. But you can open this, and yes, definitely I shall be writing or attaching or doing something on this this side. And this actually came from a calendar. So when you have old calendars, if you're sitting there saying, oh my god, I love this calendar, the year is over, what am I going to do with this calendar? What we do is we usually, for business reasons, save our calendar for like three to four years. And then after three to four years, we simply used to recycle them. Now I'm looking at those calendars and taking off like the pages of the calendars that I know I like and will use in books like this. Whereas before they simply got recycled. Um, and here, just some snippets that I had left, which are great if you want to make a little note. Um, you can rip these out, but if you do, you want to rip them from here. So if I made a note here, I wouldn't rip the whole thing out because the other half of the snippet is on another page tucked in somewhere. Sometimes I make these so that they are movable and removable. 
Um, but you know, that's up to you what you want to do. And I just love the way this is upside down. So that's another thing is, you know, you have the wording here that's upside down, but then you have this, which is not upside down. So using weird pieces of paper off cuts is, you know, these books are a great place for that. And I also, when I ripped the legal pad out, some of the pages, as you could see, I turned them <laughs> this way. But I left this edge rough, but you could cut it so it's completely smooth and professional looking. You could curve the end edges with your little fancy um, edge cutters. Like, it's up to you. Here, I have another belly band going and some cards that are looped over that that, I was, that were sent to me. Here I have an antique piece of ephemera. I know, evil, sacrilege. I partially glued it on this page so that I could partially use it just as something to hold paper here. But, you know, he's really cool. He's really jolly. And this piece is from the 1800s. I actually have a series of these from the 1800s. And you can even see where the artist had signed this. So don't be afraid to use actual ephemera in your book, you know, I, or books. I am definitely a proponent of that. And once again, you see more snippets. And then as we go through here, I think there's another element I can show you. It's further back than I thought. Yeah, so I just simply took, once again, some leftover snippets I had and did some fancy cutting, and then I glued it in, and, you know, now it's just something pretty to look at on the page that's glued in there. Here we have another belly band, and this actually says, like, you know, name, address, whatever. I love stuff like this just for pure fun. Because what you can do, especially if you're someone who moves around a lot, we don't necessarily move around a lot. But let's say that I took this with me on a trip. I could actually write the date where we were and I can actually, you know, fill this in with our name and then where we were visiting and the date and that it was a vacation or a business trip or whatever. And then here, another favorite element of mine is to add a place to put your pen, your pencil, your quill pen whatever it is and so I actually create these and sometimes I make them so they can clip in this one I wanted to be permanently attached because this paper is very sturdy and so I actually made this one using several different elements and if you want to see how I make these in the different ways of making them besides just being a regular clip on or clip in let me know and I could create a video on that Something else I did is I actually created, uh, I didn't create the pencil, but underneath this, there's like when you go um, to expos and business things, you receive all these pencils and pens and things like that. And so what I did is I took the pencil, I covered it in the sheet music, I decoupaged it, and then I used some washi tape here as well as here. I used honestly just a gold um, permanent magic marker to like just color this and then I did the same to the eraser I used a broken earring so I have um, lots of costume jewelry as you guys know I collect it and so in my collection obviously I think I have things that are not wearable or maybe it's there's just one earring and what I did is I used the finding from that earring to bend and press into this eraser had some chain from a necklace, have, you know, a piece of glitzy glam, which is this rhinestone, and I also have some, like, shells, which I, you know, and that's how I made the toggly part of this, but if you want to see a video on how I make these pencils, I'm telling you guys, you can make tons of these, like, within, I would say, half an hour, you should be able to make, like, maybe 12 of these. The way that I do it, it's simple, it's to the point, and they're awesome. You know, I give them to, my sister has some, my friend has some, my daughter has some, my husband would have some, but where he works, he can't have some of these dangly things due to safety, but he definitely has some here at home. But anyway, once again, getting back to that calendar, this is another part of the calendar. I folded it in half. The calendar was huge. 
um, so I folded it in half. So here are the other aunties and an uncle, and it's a history of racial injustice, and you can see it says calendar 2019. So you have something that you could do with those old calendars, especially if they're meaningful. And then here we have England and Wales. So once again, we're back into the maps. I love this piece, um, which is from a music magazine. And so I cut her out. She's, I think they were talking about the blues or something like that. And so she's now in this book. And I actually just did some decorative cutting on the edges, cut it the way I wanted to fit the pages, more decorative cutting, but voila, of course, another belly band and also a side pocket here. And I actually added some photographs of our child and such. So, and this is just from a business ledger type paper because I definitely have some ledger paper as well. So great way to use up that ledger paper if you're not using it for other things. Here, this just folds down. You can put like a little hidden note here and this cool sticker and these actually came from a clothing item that I purchased so that's another good place to get some items for your book is look at those tags that they put on your clothes if they're super cool you didn't know what to do with them or you have a drawer full of them because you're like oh these are so cool um now you have something you could do with them I made this tab um and this is actually from a clothing item as well and then I put a piece of decorative paper on the back of it once again, and then here, this is something that our daughter, her very, very first piece of needlepoint that she attempted a long time ago, and I sewed it in, so the green parts, that's where I sewed it in, to this page, and that's something else that people do, is they not only glue in, but they sew and they clip things into these books. I have another beautiful wild turkey feather here. And this one I actually taped in. Um, this is from when I um, entered the Betty Crocker cooking contest. And I received a honorable mention. And then here I have a section where I keep some of my concert um, tickets. And this is actually a combination, I think, of four different pockets. So there's one here, here here yep there's four and then there's one here so I actually just folded this paper in a way to create four like storage areas to use as pockets and then obviously just have a decorative element you know you put some paper some words I love Julia Child she had a series of stickers which I think came out before she died and so I love many and she a lot of her little sayings are on these stickers and quote so um he, and they obviously a lot of them had something to do with tea so that's where that's from so that's a sticker and you can see where i sewed this in this particular signature and then here i actually have a picture of my grandmother's house which i actually went to google got one of her houses actually she had two went on to google um earth and I can actually see like the place live today if I wanted to. And I actually took a picture and I do sometimes go there and look at it just to see how the folks are keeping it up. And I took a photo, I'm sorry, printed that out um, and then cut it, obviously added it to this book. Here's some more of that stock, New York Stock Exchange um, paper with all of the information from that day and that time in 1966 and what I did with this is just to make it more interesting is I highlight the date every once in a while and I actually highlighted the name of companies that I recognize or that are still in business today you don't have to do anything like that I'm just saying these are some things that you could do to make you know your elements a little more interesting here I have this card, which actually is a pocket as well. So you put things in this way. So great place for business cards. And here we have some beautiful, beautiful paper. I love this paper. And I purchased, I can't remember, I want to say it's like 12, 13 pounds of paper or something like that. 
and it was only eight dollars and there are hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of sheets plus the lady gave me like notebooks of paper and notepads of paper um, on top of all of that other paper so I have a lot of like decorative paper now and I'm very grateful for that and here I have some things I cut out of actually ads so I had a catalog and I had these pretty little like um I don't know what to call them like pictures with collections of things so I took some of those little snippets and cut them out and used them as well in my books and here we have another belly band this is another vintage ad from the 1930s 1940s and with these what you could do is leave them as is or you can actually almost watercolor them or even if you have watercolor markers are something that they sell now so you don't have to use actual watercolors and at, you could colorize some of them. Sometimes I definitely do that. And here, this is from one of the notebooks of paper that the lady gave me with my $8 deal. And here I have this cute, cute little um, card. And I just love, of course, the little jacket. It's on a hanger and you can open it up and you can still write in it. You can write in it here, but you can also write in it on this side, which is why I cut it like that. The name of the maker of the card actually is glued down behind this. And this is a old um, envelope from when this is from the Yale University Cooperative. Whereas when you had pictures develop, they would come in something like this. And you, after the folks at Yale developed your pictures, you would get them back in these brown envelopes. So, and I actually just took the word antique from the antiques journal and put it on here just because I thought it was interesting and then here I have I mean no book can be complete without having some more motorcycle stuff in it but here we have this this is actually from a calendar as well and then you flip it over you have plenty of room for writing and I have metallic markers so that I can write on this black um, background or even if it was a super dark color of any type and you would be able to see everything I wrote so they do sell the thin like tipped markers in metallics as well and also metallics come in a lot of different colors so not just gold silver copper so here I have some ribbon some washi tape some stickers um, this card that I made with a butterfly on it and this um, uh, this quote which says special people can never be forgotten and this is a what I call an invisible pocket because you can put things on this side and tuck them all the way through to this side so you could get like almost a full sheet of paper in there and I actually just cut this backing out from a piece of paper tucked it in there was a lot of gluing going on and ended up with a page that looks like this so ribbon glue washi tape regular to I mean you can do so many things and so I'm not going to show you like all the paper but we'll get to this section which has once again another pocket pockets are so important but you can also write here as well and look some of the little sticker not stickers but cut out things that my daughter made um, but the pockets are useful because you'll be surprised when you go through your, all the papers and things in your home, how many things that you, you'll be like, oh, that little say, that little like quote or saying from my fortune that I got out of a fortune cookie that I kept because I thought it was so relevant or cool or whatever. You have a place to put those in here, movie ticket stubs from your favorite six movies concert tickets you know you were invited to parties whatever it was um like th this having all these pockets believe me you'll you'll be happy because you'll have plenty of places to store things and so here this is just something i made mo more so for demonstration purposes but it is an eye and a purpley blue umbrella so anyone who's a fan of prints um, and then here, this is something I cut out from a magazine. This is actually washi tape. And I used an envelope to create that particular pocket. 
and I also created from the flap of the envelope an area where you can tuck items so you can do your tucking um, and that has nothing to do with RuPaul's Drag Race thank you and then here you flip through more pretty papers you can see where I sewed in this particular signature this is something that our daughter had made a long time ago but what I did is I sewed it in so it's not going anywhere and then more fancy paper which is why I'm passing all of that and this is just a decorative element I was more so experimenting and what I did is folded the paper over I used another piece of paper Obviously, you can see the lace is here, and I hand sewed it through. I actually like when people hand sew things in their journal, in these um, junk journals, lookbooks, whatever you want to call them, more so than using a machine. I understand, especially if you're making a bunch of these for sale, you know, sewing stuff with a machine is going to be a lot faster, and there, it's a simple stitch and the machine is doing all the work but I sort of like seeing you know things that are handmade as well and seeing like you know those stitches are not exactly perfect but they're definitely effective and here we have another area where I simply like another cut out for my daughter um, this is a month of my birthday this is something I actually cut out from a calendar where my husband had written on that particular day, August 9th, that it was my birthday. So I put that in there. I created this area so that, first of all, when you look at this video, you remember to subscribe and like the video and also comment so you can enter to win one of these books. And you could be in and all the fun now and into the future. But I also wanted a place to put my, my variety of business cards that are my actual business cards from my corporate career and so I have those in there as well as from our businesses our personal family businesses are in there as well and then here I have that was just from a um, a convention that I went to and then then here at the back what we have is this accordion area and this is just so that you have a place to make additional notes but it also looks pretty cool it has this antique stamp from I believe it's 1909 or something I don't know what the date is I might be making that up and then here we have my initial here we have once again another pocket and there's also this bigger pocket over here and what this is, I actually do a lot with things that have like this acetate from envelopes from junk mail. And this is a double belly band. Honestly, that's what it is. But I also wanted to make, so you can see it goes all the way through there. It goes all the way through here. But I wanted this to be more like a picture frame so I could put something in there, especially if it's a perfect 10. And then I have these like toggle, um, sticker tag things so I sort of like put those on the edge just to make a little decoration and a pull tab from some old U.S. postal um, ephemera leftover stuff and I have the Powerpuff Girls going at it and this you guys have seen in some of my button videos and I never knew what to do with it I just lived with my button videos I'm sorry my button items and now he has a he or she has a place here the sheep and it still has the wool on it, wool yarn, and of course it says France. This is London Fog from one of my London Fog coats, and I love their tags, so guess what? I put a, um, this thong of hemp through it, and it'll end up being like, I don't know, a bookmark in this book or something. This is just something as a memory from um, how I met my husband, actually. If you want to hear that story, very interesting. Please leave a comment down below and I might do that for you. So really, that's what this book is. That's everything that's in it. Um, it's fun. It, I think it's fun. I enjoy using it. I enjoy like seeing things. 
as I go through things I'm looking for to create these books. I also like seeing some of these memories and now I run to my books that I have like this and some of those items end up living in those books versus you know living we like I said we have great storage areas especially in a house like this but if everything's just put away and you never can see it and enjoy it you know what's the purpose so thank you guys so much for tuning in and please remember to subscribe to the channel leave a comment down below if you add the hashtag the velvet lounge life to your comment you will have an extra entry into our giveaway of two books similar to this and also watch our other videos and do the same and those will be additional entries you should see the piece of paper that i'm keeping a tally of this actually i had to graduate to a notebook which made me very happy so enter more than once you'll have a better chance to win and also i hope that you find these videos helpful informative whatever and if you do please see our description under each video for discounts and other special offers that are specifically for you guys and help support the channel as well so thank you so much for tuning in remember that your health is your wealth and without your health you have absolutely nothing and remember to vote on the baby so please 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 take care of yourselves and enjoy your day